What is going on you guys? It is Avery here bringing you guys a brand new video today and talking about possible cards coming off the forbidden and limited list because of the new link summoning mechanic. Now before you guys go all crazy in the comments saying, are you kidding me? The majority of these cards that you're showing, uh, like CyberSign and all that, they're they're too insane. Uh, they, they need to stay banned. You don't know what you're talking about. But chill out, chill out. I'm going to explain everything. And also, uh, just kind of a side note before we get into all this, uh, switcheroo, if you control the same number of monsters as your opponent, you switch control of all those monsters. So if you want to take your opponent's Link Summon monster, uh, it might be a good tech card. Anyway, uh, just a little side note there. Um, but, yes, I am serious, you guys. The fact that Link Summoning is going to be coming out at around August time or so, we could potentially see a giant shift on our Forbidden and Limited list at this time because of the game going to be so much slower. Um, an example that I have here is of course Snatch Steel and Yadagrasu and of course CyberSign and CED, but we'll get into those later. Um, but like one that I was thinking about with uh, Snatch Steel earlier today, actually funny enough, was that, you know, let's say that your opponent makes a Link Summon monster. Let's take Decode Talker for example. You know, they use three effect monsters, they bring out Decode Talker, and now they have a Link Summon monster and they're able to play out monsters from their extra deck into the main monster zone. And, you know, let's say they somehow do this first turn. You draw for turn, activate the Snatch Steel, take your opponent's Link Summon Monster. Now, do I think it's going to be that simple? No, I don't, because I feel like in order to basically throw in so much commitment into one uh, Link Summon Monster, and then to just have it be Snatch Steeled away is just far too much of a loss for the opposing player, and it just makes it completely unfair because it almost makes a game of, you know, make your Link Summon monster first turn. Do you have the Snatch Steel? If you do, then GG. If not, then I win. So I think that something like Snatch Steel might get in a rattle where it's something like, you know, pay 2,000 of your life points, select a monster in your opponent's main monster zone, take control of it until the end phase, um, and, you know, just kind of make it to where they can't get linked uh, summon monsters. But anything else is fair game. You know, they can go for Synchros, Exceeds, or whatever the case may be. Um, and then if you Snatch Steel, let's say an Exceed, which is in their extra deck monster zone, then you can be able to put it in your extra monster zone. Um, and then the other thing, too, is that with uh, Yadagorasu, you know, I've been preaching for the past couple of years now that I've been doing Yugi tubing on and off, um, but now, of course, officially starting now, um, is that Yadagorasu can come back. I mean, it's really not all that broken of a card. Um, you know, spirits aren't really that much of an issue. Um, they're not seeing a lot of competitive play, and yes, the Yada Lock is busted, but the fact is, is that when the Yada Lock was basically, I guess, Tier 1 or Tier 0 or whatever, you had CED to just blow away the entire board, play out Yada, and attack directly, which would then, of course, as everyone knows, lock your opponent out of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! But, you know, with the correct errata, of course, this card could come back, or once again, you know, having Link summon monsters, you have to get through that monster before you can even have Yada Garasu attack. So it's almost kind of like another wall of protection that the opponent would have to get through if they wanted to even kill you with Yada. And also, at the same time, with that, I mean, what is, how is your opponent going to Yada lock you? in a format with Link Summoning. I'm not talking about a format like right now. Yadagrasu might be able to be exposed somehow. I don't really know how, which is why I think it come come back now, but that's a completely different topic. In a format with Link Summoning, where the game is much slower, it's much more control-oriented, um, and it's, you know, basically now the game will shift into where just T-setting is a very good play. And for those of you who don't know what T-setting is, T-setting is basically, you know, for example, you have your first five cards in your opening hand, you set a card to your back row, and you set a monster, and you pass. The reason why that this was so good back in, like, you know, quick draw format back when Drill Warrior was $40 was because, number one, the game was much slower, and number two, because your opponent had to think that that face-down card could be anything. They would, you know, draw for turn and be like, oh my god, is is that, you know, a, a, I don't know, a drastic drop-off. That wasn't played back then, but you get what I mean. It could be anything. A Mirror Force, Torrential, um, uh, Magical Hats, I don't know. Like, anything could be anything in that back row, and it, it was just something that you had to look out for back then. Now, in regards to, uh, again, bringing up Link Summoning, is that 
you're going to have to play more carefully with how you play your monsters, which is why people want to play Senate Switch, because you can be able to move your monsters to unoccupied monster zones. Um, cards that you think wouldn't be all that good, such as something like Switcheroo, where you know you got the same number of monsters as your opponent, just switch them. So you might be able to take their linked monster as long as you got the same number of monsters. Um, so just, you know, cute little combos like that can, you know, make the game slower, but also be able to shift the game into someone's favor. It's kind of like, you know, back in the day, if you had three monsters on the field in GOAT format, you were really winning the game, uh, just because it was so hard to get around three monsters back then, unless you, you know, top decked a board wipe or something. So, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that a lot of cards will be able to come off the Forbidden Limited list to either one, two, or three um, because of this new link summoning mechanic, and, you know, these four cards here, like Cyber Sign and all that, are, you know, just very small examples, obviously, there's probably hundreds at this point, banned cards on the ban list, um, and also, just as a quick side note before I finish out the video, Cyber Sign 2 would be not very busted in this link summoning, um, game, because, you know, you can't, keep on summoning out fusion the grant you granted you would only summon out one anyway but to pay five thousand to play it out in your extra monster zone and then not be able to link summon or do anything else until that monster was destroyed not all that good if you ask me so yeah that's just my opinion on that but again let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh obviously link summoning is going to slow the game down i mean hell that's why senate switch is a nine dollar card because people want to be able to move their monsters to other unoccupied zones um cards that destroy everything in like one row of um of a field are fairly decent now so the game is definitely changing and i want to know what you guys think about all these changes thank you guys for watching as always and i will see you guys in the next video